now our next speaker, Quickens from Smart Here. Shadows as a platform. The world is changing every day. Sometimes with a lot of busy breaks, like when Donald Trump was elected. But it is what what is also changing is the way we communicate and interact with each other. Currently, two billion people have smartphones. Are smartphones users? Of them, sixty percent are mostly active WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger users. And those platforms are growing year on year, so people are using a lot of instant messenger applications. Normally when we look into these numbers, we tend to look only to this side of the world. But if we look into China, there is an application we shot that is very popular there, and has 900 million accounts. Of those 900 million accounts, only 70 million are outside of China, which means that 60% of Chinese population uses WeChat. And what is also curious about WeChat is that they have a lot of functionalities, and one of the functionalities they have is that you can send money from one account to other account. So you can send you 10 euros to a friend, you can send 10 euros through WeChat to your friend. And if you go to some local markets in China, you will find out that some sellers do not accept money or credit cards as payment anymore. They only accept WeChat payments. Other change that we see, and this is a study from 2011, that one third of Americans prefer to send text messages or receive text messages instead of doing a voice call. Probably a bit outdated, and probably the number today is a bit. So, people are always on the smartphone, they are using text message applications, so business won't be there. And the new trend was born, chatbots. And this is a graph of uh, the searches on Google by the term chatbots, and you can see that they are increasing, and there was a spike on last year when Facebook released the bot SDK for Facebook Messenger. So, why am I talking about chatbots? Don't blame me, blame them. Uh, I'm the CEO of Smart, and Smart is a marketing automation platform, and since the beginning, we, we set ourselves two main missions for our technology. Mission number one, we want to help our clients to convert more visitors into leads meaning people coming to the website and leaving their contact details because they have some sort of interest in the product or service that the client is selling. Mission number two, having those leads, we want to help our clients to convert more leads into effective sales. As part of mission one, we start with some experiences with chatbots in websites to replace web forms. And what we found out is that the user engagement was very good. Some of the people, if not most of the people, thought that there was a human on the other end of the line. Uh, and we saw that the conversion rates, that is the measure in the KPI that is used on websites, the measure of the number of leads per visitor, increases as well. One example. One of our clients had this form. This is a form where you can provide your details and if you are looking for a personal credit or a credit card, you can fill your details here and it, it will ask a lot of questions more and we'll try to find what is the best offer from a set of companies and we'll show you a link leading you to that, that uh, company that has the best offer. This, is a, this was a multi-step form that is also a, an evolution in the digital marketing space when digital marketing started, people used the loan forms, but then they realized that people when see a loan form, you have a lot of fields to, to, to fill in, people get scared. 
So they started to split that in step form. So when the user gets to step three, he thinks, okay, I'm already here, let's go to the end. So, but our client had this form, and they decided to replace this form by a full screen chatbot. The chatbot will do the same questions, but in a conversional approach. And for the same period, what they found out is that at the end, they were generating more than 200% more leads. And when they, they show the link at the end, leading to a, a company that, that has the best offer for the credit card, they had 85% of click-through ratio instead of 25% uh, click-through ratio with the web forms. But why chatbot is a platform? Why did I show that title? Because I believe that chatbots are a very powerful platform to build applications and user flows quickly and the main difference that your users will uh, feel at home. And it seems I'm not the only one. This is a quote from Microsoft CEO saying that bots are the new apps. Also, Facebook. Uh, this guy, David Marcos, is the head of Messenger at Facebook. And in fact, this guy was left his job as PayPal CEO to go to Facebook and head the Messenger division because he believes we are in the start of a new era. But what are the reasons why chatbots are very good as a platform to develop applications or user tools? Because they use already use a lot of chat applications or instant messaging applications, so they know exactly how to use them. They feel comfortable using those applications. They work perfectly on mobile, and they solve a small problem of distribution. Because if I want uh, I say that I want to order a, 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 a hamburger from Burger King. I have my smartphone, I need to go to the App Store, search for the Burger King application, I need to click to install, wait for the loads, then open the application, I need to know the application works. But if I have a chatbot from Burger King, let's say on Facebook Messenger, I just have the contact from Burger King and I start talking to the bot and it is immediately. When we, we talk about chatbots, and you saw the last presentation that, that had a lot of, of artificial intelligence on it, we normally think of the chatbots as intelligent. You give a free text box, the user says something, you need to understand and do something what, with what the user is saying or, or asking. So the question is, should the chatbots be intelligent or not, or are we there in in a, in a time where we can have all the chatbots to be intelligent. What is the state of art in this? A lot of work is being done on the area of artificial intelligence. So we, you have seen the, the last presentation from Microsoft. Uh, this is a very complex area with techniques such as natural language processing, machine learning, neural networks. So there's a lot of work being done by the big players like. Microsoft, like Facebook, like Google, like Apple, like Amazon, and also by a lot of startups or companies that are appearing every day. The first company was acquired by Facebook two years ago. The second one was acquired by Google last year. And the third one, Elon Musk, is putting money into it. And the guy that is running the company is the, the, the old CTO of Stripe. And there are a lot more companies working on this field of artificial intelligence and trying to understand natural language and what are the intents and so on. But in my view, should chatbots be intelligent or not? I think we are not there yet. And the reason I think we are not there yet is because I think there are two main factors in having a chatbot to be intelligent. Factor number one, you need to understand what the user is saying, asking, or what is the, the, the wish of the user when he types something to a chat bot, to a, to a chat window. And the second factor is, after you understand what the user is saying or is asking, you need to be able to do the action. So, in the last presentation, there was a white song intent, but if there was not a white song intent, even if, if, if the, the computer 
quickly realizes that the intent was to turn the lights off. If there is no action to turn the lights off, then the user will, will get frustrated. Here are two examples of chatbots that provide a free text box to the user, and then the chatbot cannot understand what the user is asking or saying. And then the chatbot asks the user to repeat using other words. But this leads to user frustration because you are typing something and the chatbot keeps saying, I don't understand you. And you keep typing and the chatbot keeps saying, I don't understand you. But there are also very good examples. Most of those good examples are coming from research, from universities. These two examples, and, and the one in the left, is the current winner of the Loner Prize. And the Loner Prize is an annual prize that awards chatbots that can keep a human-like conversation for a long time. But not all these chatbots, the main intent of them is to keep the conversation going, not doing something in the back or doing some kind of automation or operation. So, what's our approach? What we do while building our uh, chatbot platform? We have gone through a decision tree approach, which means that we, we try to get a more closed approach in what you give to the user, and then based on the, what the user is saying or asking, you go into different paths in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the decision tree. So you can have several branches, and this can become very complex, and then you can jump back to other, to other, uh, to other branches. So it's a bit of when the chatbot starts, you present what are the options of what are I, as a chatbot, can do for you, and then depending on what you are saying, I go to a different flow, and maybe I will ask you some for, for some more information. The shot in the left is one of the examples on the, the, the slide that I said that leads to user frustration, and the, the shot on the right is a similar shot, but more just at the beginning, it will present what are the options about what, what the I as a chatbot can do for you instead of giving you a free text box, but then I can only do three, three operations to you. So, coming back to chatbots as a platform and why they are a, a rich platform to build applications. When we started, we started with very simple chatbots, asking name, phone, email address, mostly for lead generation. And then we realized that we, we had to make our chatbots more sexy. So we started adding more components like showing an image, playing a video, a carousel that is that, that kind of component with a set of cards and you swipe left or swipe right to choose the right option, option list. Also the decision trees. And then we made them even more powerful. We had the option to integrate easily with external APIs and also to load information from external environments. What is all? If in my chatbot I need to ask what is the city of the user, and before that I ask what is his district. And if I have a service that based on the district gives me a list of cities, I don't have to configure my chatbot with all the possible cities. I can add an action as a step that is loaded from that web service with a list of cities and present the list of cities as options to the user. We also had the options to, to do payments in the chatbot with credit card, as you can see in the example. So you are in the chatbot, and sometimes you do the transaction, and, with, and without leaving the chatbot, you can do the transaction inside the chatbot with your credit card. <coughs> Sorry. We also have components to do what we call optimization, validation, authentication. What, what is this? Imagine that you have your database of users, and then a user comes to your chatbot, you don't have a login or logout, and then you need to make sure that the user is the right user that can do that operation. So the user will input the email address 
you check the old address against your database, and if the user has the telephone number on his customer record, we send a, a, a numeric code by SMS to the user, the user will not be in the chat, we will put the SMS code in the chat box, and then we, we are sure that he's the right user. We also had the options to upload forms and do OCR document validation. What is this? Imagine that we have a process, we use that in a customer that sells insurances. And as part of selling insurances, there is a process where the chatbot will ask the user details. And they need a copy of the driver license of the user. So the use case is the user is using the smartphone goes to that step, takes a picture with the smartphone, we open the camera of the smartphone, user takes a picture of the driver license, sends the driver license, and using OCR, we, we validate if we, we think it is a driver license or not. And if it is, we move on. Also, as we are uh, a marketing automation platform, we benefit from, from all the components that we have in a marketing automation platform, so the user is in the chatbot, and after the user leaves his details, we can do a lot of workflows, sending email, doing click to calls, sending SMS to that user. But to better explain some of the components and some of the challenges we had while building our chatbot platform, I'm going to show you some of the challenges in what was, the, what was the problem, and now we solve that, if we solve it. So, the first challenge was how to make it work. I have my configuration of my scripts, and believe me, we have clients that make scripts with 400 stacks, and they get very complex, so how can, make, how can I make it work and render on the browser or on the website of the user? And for that, we generate a JavaScript file and do all the work by inside. As part of this JavaScript file, there is a typewriter component that simulates the user that is typing. Uh, we generate the JavaScript file, we search the JavaScript file, and all the work is done by inside, only goes to the server when required. And this was working good until Big, big shots generate big JavaScript files and users without Avast antivirus didn't see the shots because Avast antivirus started to block our shots. And the problem was not that the antivirus of our chat was malware or, or a virus, was that our JavaScript file was so big that it crashed Avast antivirus JavaScript validation agent. And the not my fault works on my computer approach didn't work here, so we had to find a solution. And so we split JavaScript file into several JavaScript files. The library is in one side, the common code in one side, the server in the other side, so instead of generating only one JavaScript file, we generated several JavaScript files. Challenge number three, scalability. Generating JavaScript files with thousands of users accessing your system doesn't scale. So our solution was to add a publish chat functionality to our chats. So the publish chat will generate JavaScript files in the background, will upload them to, the, to a content delivery network, and will serve from the CDN. So when users are accessing our chats, they are not in our servers, but they are being served directly from the CDN. And only when, when the chat needs to communicate with the server, it will make a call to the server. But then we got challenge number four, CDN documentation. You know that the two biggest problems in computation are naming things and caching validation. So I make changes to the chat, I publish it, but it takes 15 minutes to be enabled by users. That was not a very good use case for our, for our clients. Mostly because sometimes they were fixing a typo because they made a mistake. They had a typo in some text that they were saying to the users and they, they want to fix it fast. So you were taking 15 minutes to validate the cache. So our solution was, as we have several JavaScript files, 
we had a little bit of cast time to leave headers to each of the JavaScript files depending on the purpose of the JavaScript file. Libraries that don't, don't change very often, we had one day of time to leave. The chat generally code is common in all chats, also doesn't change that, that much. And when it changes, we can force a validation and we are okay in waiting 15 minutes one day. But that specific bit that has all the logic in that chat, all, all the text in that chat, has one minute time to leave cache. This means that most of the time we are not serving from the CDA, but from S3 that is behind. Challenge number five. My chats are live, users are accessing it, but my client can see anything. So I, how can I know how many users are accessing the chats, how many users are leaving the chat at a certain point, how many users are going through each branch of the chat. I don't know anything. To solve this, instead of trying to build the complex reporting in the analytics and metric system, we use the tool that people normally use for analytics. We use the Google Analytics. So we made an integration between our chat and Google Analytics, and for every step a user performs in the chat, we generate an event to Google Analytics with all the information of that step. At the end of the day, our clients can download a report from Google Analytics with all the events for that specific chat and do all the metrics they want. Also, users at a certain point can trigger specific custom Google Analytics events depending on their goal, their business. Challenge number six. We started with chatbots a long time ago, probably three, four years ago. And our chatbots worked on, the, on our client's website. But then we kept, after Facebook released the, the bot SDK for Messenger, we kept hearing the question, can I have my bot in Facebook Messenger as well? So we had to find a solution. And for this, we partnered with Microsoft and developed the integration between our chatbots and Microsoft Bot Framework. Microsoft Bot Framework is another abstraction layer that makes chatbots available in all these channels. Facebook Messenger, Skype, who didn't know that Skype has bots? I didn't know until I, <laughs> I read the documentation from Bot Framework. Uh, Slack, Telegram and Keep. And having all these channels is quite good for presentations, but at the end, users are only concerned with Facebook Messenger. It's the only channel they want to have their chats. Challenge number seven. I can do a lot of automation with my chatbot. I can call external services. We have some clients that are doing things like the user can present the password from the chatbot by integrating the chatbot with, the, with their account management system and doing the reset of the password. But even with all these complex decision trees, there are some points when I need to connect the user to a human. So the challenge was having the same chat, or can at a certain point connect that to a human without the user leaving the chat either. We are not there yet, but we did, we did the first prototype connecting with a real user on Skype. So at a certain point, we transferred the chat window to a Skype user. For the user that is in the chat window, it's totally transparent, but then every single time it goes to a Skype window of other user, and every single the other user on Skype times goes to the chat window. But currently, we are integrating with a call, management, call center management software that already has support to do live chats. But we will be able to do is, using the same chat window, I can uh, connect to an agent on, on this call center management software, and everything I write, and the user writes on the chat window, goes to the, the, the agent, and everything the agent writes goes to the, the chat window. And as our platform is integrated with Microsoft Bot Framework, this means that all this functionality will work if our chatbot is being rendered on a website, or if our chatbot is being rendered on Facebook Messenger, on Skype, on Telegram, and so on. 
So, so this is it, is, but which is just a mirror. I have prepared the demo of our chatbots, and the URLs are here. So, you can give feedback for this talk, and at the same time, try our chatbots in the demo of what the marketing automation can do together with the chatbots. The first link is for the chatbot to be rendered on the website, so it will render on, the, on, the, on your browser. The second one is a Facebook page I created, so if you go to that Facebook page and start talking with the bots, and Facebook has one thing. If you have a chatbot on Facebook, Facebook requires that the user is the first one to say something. So the chatbot cannot start saying something. So if you go there, you need to send a message to, to, to the page, and then the chatbot will start. If you want to go more quickly, and if you have Facebook Messenger application installed, there is a, a functionality to scan a code, like a PR code, in which is this code. So you go to your profile, you click on your picture, then a code like this appears, you click on that code, and then there is a scan code option, you point there, and then we start talking with our boss. Thank you. Let them scan. <laughs> keep your keep your mouth from the stars, please. You will understand. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture, picture of this guy's phone. Can you just have a look? <laughs> so, question to people. Besides scanning the code. <laughs> More than Hi, congratulations on your presentation. I have one question. Do your client scripts files are created like each sentence are created by your clients, or is there an antagonism on the sentences that appear on the chat pod? Uh, I ask if the sentences that appear in the chat pod conversations are created by the clients, or if they are dynamically generated by some algorithm or so They are created by the clients. So if you look into those platforms like bot framework, even the, the Facebook Messenger SDK, you need to call your bots using their SDK. But we have, we have a platform where, where you, you graphically can configure the chat. So it's like a chatbot CMS. So you, you configure all the things that the chatbot is saying, all the questions, and, and then how, how you move for one side or other side. So if I talk to your bot one time, two times, three times, the message I receive are always the same. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. When do you think we will have really intelligent bots? So you can, you can have a conversation like uh, a real person. We already have, as I saw, uh, as I, I can show you some examples. But my point is, not only you have chatbots for a specific reason, for doing a specific task, for doing a specific operation, and the set of operations that you can do is, is limited. So if you give all the intelligence to the user, the user can type anything, and you will not be able to do your operation using the same. So, we probably will bring intelligence to our chatbots, but we will do it not so open that you can type anything and the bot needs to realize what the user wants and need to do something on the background because the operation may not be able. So, you, you think intelligence in this case is not so good because you want to direct you need to buy something or do yeah, something. Yeah, we have a purpose for the chatbots. It's not a, 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 a generic chatbot. Uh, we 
but other parts of Photoshop, even if you're looking for Google Assistant, like Siri or Google Assistant, they have a set of operations that they can do when you don't understand them, but when, when they don't have any operation to do, they will search a set of results. So, that's what they do. They will search a set of results. They will search a set of results. They will search a set of results. Most of these bots are not doing a set of results. They will search a set of operations to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.